like you to meet Sweet Charlene, the barbecue seasoning created from family bonds that is low in sodium but high in flavor. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or a seasoned pit master. Level up your barbecue game with this dry rub that has amazing taste and great color. Go to eddywrightbarbecue.com right now and order your choice between the 6-ounce shaker bottle, the 16-ounce bag, or my favorite, the 32-ounce bag, and start rubbing your beef, pork, and poultry the right way. Welcome to Black Smoke Barbecue. We are a collaborative group that focuses on different aspects of barbecue from pitmasters from all across North America. Barbecue is a culture, and we discuss topics, ideas, and the methods of it on the Black Smoke Barbecue podcast. Our mission is to spotlight those lesser known content creators in backyard barbecue, catering, food truck operations, as well as the African American experience in modern day barbecue. Sit back, relax, listen, and enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Black Smoke Barbecue Podcast. I am your friend, Charlie Maverick, and I am here with the fellas once again. Alton's in the house. How you doing, Alton? Man, I am fantastic, man. We, we cooling down around here in Central Texas, so I'm loving life right now, man. How you been, brother? I've been good. You know, the weather's cooling down a little bit over here. There's some storms here and there, but hey, life is good. The summer is all right, all right. over. I am good. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you still uh bearing that heat in texas huh man you know we just finally got a cold front come through. i saw that yeah well you in the 90s now I yeah i don't think we hit 90 degrees today what oh, yeah, watch out there now. you know so you know we got the jacuzzi running 104 degrees and all that now <laughs> since we over here shipping so you know <laughs> but we deserve it we need some rain though we still need some rain we got a little bit coming through now uh, but we need a good slow soaking rain there for uh, for a, a, quite a few days, man, to catch up with this drought situation. So, but we making it, we making it. Good, good. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again, man. Been a yes, few sir, weeks. Likewise. Been seeing a lot of videos from you on the social medias. You know, we're gonna talk about that yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah yes, man. sir. T's in the house. How you doing, T? Oh man, doing all right, man. How y'all fellas doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Hey, I like that uh that art behind you, man. That's new, right? Ah, uh, yeah. I finally decided to get some background for the <laughs> pod, <good>. you know. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. What you been up to, dude? Man, chilling, trying to fight this uh this the seasonal pollen. It's been oh. high here. Yeah, mm. so that's why I kind of got like the nasal thing going on. But uh, oh, other than that, man, just been chilling. Um, yeah, getting a couple cooks in here and there. I think I got some. Yeah, I got some video coming up. I need to edit. Yeah, good. We're gonna talk about that too. Uh, you and I were talking a little bit, and uh, was it a week or so ago? You saw a couple of bees. Are they back or are they gone again? Yeah, I matter of fact, I saw one um, this week. Had I went your name to on go it. get the trash can from the front of the uh, the house, you know, and here he comes flying at my face, and I'm like, "Why? Why are y'all here? Why? Why?" <laughs> and then it just flew off. I didn't see it again, so I I don't know. I want to find out where they live know. and disturb them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're around the corner doing surveillance on you, man. <laughs> yeah, knock on their door. You know, like, hey, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> Got that trash can again. Let's go. Let's go get him. <laughs> oh, man. Nice to see you again. Hey, you know who we haven't seen in a hot minute? And we are about right. to welcome back to the Met Jeff in the house outdoors with Jeff. Where you been? Where you been, my friend? Man, what's going on, brothers? Man, it's just been busy, man. It's been a uh, it's been a busy work season. <laughs> I was supposed to have a yeah. kind of a quiet, relaxed summer, man. And uh, and I guess uh, you know some folks had other plans, but but I'm back, man. It's just, it's just been busy, man, and a lot of a lot of traveling with work. But you know, glad to be back on the pod and glad to be back touching my grills again because it's it's been it's been like that for you know for a good six six weeks something like that, man. It's just been kind of crazy, but glad things are slowing oh, down. Wow. Yeah, 
man. Yeah, it's been a been a hot minute. We're we're so happy to have you back, man. You know, we can't do the pod without you, dude. Hey, glad to be glad to be back so, to see y'all, man. Yeah, man. So, falls here. We got tired of summer. They keep saying it's the highest summer on record every year. Makes us more happy that the summer's gone and the fall's here. And then with the fall comes is football. How you guys feel about this change in the season? Y'all ready for it? Y'all like, mm, I, I was just warming up a little bit. Summer's gone too early. You know, how you feeling? Man, I miss football, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It ain't nothing like having a football game, having them sounds, you know, pumping. When you back there, got the grill fired up, man. Got the cold one in your hand and the fellas over. Dog, come on. Oh, yeah. Can't beat That's it. True. Can't beat it. That's true. That's true. Who, Who's a – nobody on this – on this – Episode right here is a Dallas Cowboy fan, aren't they? No, no sir. Uh-uh. Oh, good. Nah. Okay. All right. Nah. Okay. All right. Nah. All right. <laughs> nah. All right. Nah. nah. Those folks need Great. some help, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? I will say this though. They look good. Their defense looked good the other day. I mean, that's what they all say at the beginning of yeah. the season. You know. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> well, okay. I'll put it to you like this. I'll put it to you like this. You know, I get their defense. I, I get more good, into college but football. Did, but what did that look like? Miami Hurricanes has been, you know, my team for years and years and years. That's and like, I remember the years where you know we had Gino Toretta as quarterback, and he wasn't very good. And the defense was strong, and won the Heisman Trophy. I know they said Gino won the Heisman, but the defense actually <laughs> won the Heisman Trophy that year. <laughs> Uh, and they won the championship. So all I'm saying is my man Jimmy Johnson said it best that defense wins you championships. Hmm. And I happen to think that Dallas does have a very strong defense that can really get them uh, somewhere as long as Dak doesn't turn the ball over. You know he's going to do that, right? That's yeah. You know, yeah, if he, he turns the ball that. over, <laughs> you know it might negate the uh, efforts go. of the defense. But if they can protect the ball, man, as much as – I know I hate listening to all the Cowboy fans. I don't hate the team at all, but it's just the fans just right. like little gnats yeah. in your ears, you know? Yeah. But, uh, I just don't like Jerry I'm Jones. I'm analytical with it. <laughs> Who does? <laughs> <laughs> right. Just, just that one dude. Nope. I don't even think the fans like him, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, man. Skeletor walking around. No, but they look good, man. They look good. They that's didn't look, they didn't look as strong it. as the 49ers, though. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, like, is – is the is the defense going to carry? Because that game exactly. Sunday night exactly. was, was, uh, was horrible. <laughs> yeah. So well, like, you know, they, I think the they, question yeah. the question still remains. You know, for me, is that mm-hmm. were they that good or were the Giants that bad? Because the Giants are mm-hmm. not a very good team, right? Right. You know, That's so they haven't been for a while yeah, either. Yeah. No, they haven't, man. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, but I'm not trying to take anything away from that defense. They look good. Yeah, they yeah, were aggressive. Yeah. They flew to the ball. You know, they were they were doing they were doing their thing, man. Micah Parsons in the game, boy, they they come into play this year, so we'll have to see what happens. Yeah. I'm still trying to um get used to Tom Brady not being in the league. <laughs> it's, it's rough, dude. Hey, I mean, I had a good I had a good for over twenty years, dude. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. You're right. He might be back with the Jets. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I kind of slid that in there, right? <laughs> I, heard, I heard you. <laughs> you know the funny thing, man, is is with that. I, I think they had that that uh that thing where they talked about he'd have to back out of that ownership piece, that little whatever percentage that is that he's got with the with the uh, Vegas Raiders here. But um, mm. man. It's it's crazy, man. Like you know, it, and I, I feel, dude. I I was watching that game uh, the other night, man, and it was just like you know. I mean, it was it was crazy, man. I mean, you know, September 11th, he came out with the flag and everything else, man. I was like, all right, let's let's see what Aaron can do, man. And it's crazy, man. It's just like, dang, yeah, man. you know. <laughs> and I watched a little pregame thing where he was interviewed by John McEnroe, and he was all hyped up. I was getting hyped, too. I was yeah. like, okay. And then it's like, man, I know, you know, people talk about the money he made and is going to make, you know, playing a couple seconds, minutes, or whatever, but 
you gotta realize like his age and what he did he was really looking forward to killing it this season mm, like yeah. really really looking forward to it to prove people wrong like i'm not too old and all of this and all of a sudden just boom just like that yeah but you know what man if if you know, if you looked at that team, you know, I don't know if you guys watched the uh, Hard Knock series on Max. Um, we did. We kind of like watching those, you know, every year. But <laughs> when that game started, man, I looked at my wife and I said, Aaron Rodgers ain't going to last this year because that <laughs> offensive line is horrible. Yeah. yeah. You know, they yeah. are hor- And then, dude, <laughs> the fourth play, you yeah. know, that happened. And I'm like, Okay, you could see that happen, and I know you can get into all the discussions of, you know what, that was Aaron Rodgers' fault because a three step drop, he's supposed to get rid of the ball faster, and he held on. I mean, you can have that argument all you want, you know what I mean? But yeah. the fact is, for the four plays that he was in there, he was getting harassed already. Yep. You know that offensive line is not very good. Yeah. And then you get uh, the backup in there. And, uh, you know, Wilson is trying to do his thing, and, and he played pretty well, but that offensive line has got to get better. Yeah. They have, yeah. If they're going to do anything, I don't care if you – and that's one reason I was joking about Tom Brady. Dom, Tom Brady is not a mobile quarterback. They need a mobile quarterback, about my quarterback that can use his feet because that offensive line, I think, definitely will let them down. Yeah. Yeah, I think it so will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I it would have been I would feel I would feel a little yeah. uh sorry for Aaron Rodgers, but I've been going on record for years <clears throat> saying that I don't like him. But hey, I hope you uh heal up fine. Great. Hope yeah, fine, great. <laughs> I don't you know, I, it's not that I don't like him, but I don't like some of the antics. Yeah. Oh, know, yeah, that, yeah. That he displays, you know, and, and then that whole situation, you know, with the you know, what do you what did he mm. say? I got inoculated or whatever yeah. it was yeah. and you know. And of course, you know, all the jokes are flying all over the place about, you know, he got hurt because he wasn't he wasn't vaccinated or whatever. So I don't yeah. know. Man. Couldn't miss an opportunity, could they? Man. Uh, but I wouldn't yeah, wish man. that injury on anybody, let alone, yeah. you know, uh to be at the twilight of the career, man. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't wish it. Um, but don't feel bad. Sorry. I hope you heal up fine, dude. But <laughs> hey. The um I'm still a Patriots fan. Uh, I saw I'm we lost sorry. to the Eagles. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was on the fence on watching the game. I wasn't gonna bother you about that, but yeah, <laughs> yeah I appreciate it, man. Hey, look, hey, you can see the opportunity. Everybody can yeah. get it, right? <laughs> hey, at least the game was close. I'll say that. Yeah, was, yeah. I thought it was gonna be a blowout. It seemed like when the rain stopped, it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. They're coming back, coming back. We might need some more rain. <laughs> like, what, is, what do they say about close? It only counts in horseshoes, right? Hey, Brandy said almost <laughs> doesn't count. So, <laughs> <laughs> shout out. See, I say you got the appropriate shirt on today too. So, oh yeah, yeah, representing. Man, <laughs> good lord, I feel like this was planned. <laughs> Still got that on. was the best shirt I could find real quick that I didn't have to iron, man. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it real. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh man. So, so I got a question for the group. Um, when when it cools down, people seem that you know when the summer goes, uh, the marketing and everything is like uh, you know cooking outside is you take it inside or whatever. But when it cools down, how does your your grilling behavior outside uh, go? Does it intensify? Does it not change, or um, does it tamper down a little bit because the holidays are getting close? Um, Jeff, you first. Uh, I typically it's funny because I typically kind of just stay the course. Um, you know, I'll still get out there and, you know, keep cooking. I may do some, you know, some cold weather things, you know, you know, uh, start getting some chuck roast or something like that out there on the, you know, on the smoker, you know, slow smoke it or whatever the case is. But I typically stay mm-hmm. the course, man. I mean, this, you know, if I can cook year round, which especially in this weather, I can out here, I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah. How cold is it supposed to get when it when it gets like the the winter or closer to winter? Is it like freezing out there? Or is it because you're in the desert kind of form? Uh... Um, yeah, yeah, but I'm right up on the mountains too. So I so I'm about 
my house is about thirty five thousand, not thirty five thousand, about thirty five hundred uh, feet elevation, I was about to and we're right up, up near the mountains. So if it, yeah, so if it if it rains, like if we get if we get some rain in the wintertime in Vegas, which is a lot lower elevation, probably about uh, about two thousand feet. Um, where if, if Vegas gets rain, I get snow up here. Oh, okay. Um, wow. But it doesn't. But it doesn't. Um. It's it's not that bad, man. You know, weather wise, and I got a covered patio, so I'm. I mean, it'll be snowing. I mean, you saw that one video I was out there. <laughs> you know, just going ahead, getting a brisket on. You know, a little snowstorm in the background. Yeah. So. <laughs> man, have you had to change your 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 techniques with uh, fire management that you're at a, in a different climate and at a, in a different elevation level? No, um, the only thing I have is really here. You can have a, a five million dollar house or, or a you know or a five thousand dollar house. Everybody has it. We all got this little cinder block wall thing going around here. That's that's just it for Vegas. No no matter what neighborhood you're in. So what it is is you get you always get this gust of wind that comes up both sides of your house. Oh, <laughs> and so that comes around the corner. It's good in the summer because you get a good breeze. But yeah. like you know, if you got your grill there or whatever. Um, you just got to be mindful of that when you, if you have that and you got a, um, and you got a vent right there toward that end where you have that wind coming in, you just got to be mindful of that, you know, but I rearranged the grills based on that, but I'm fine. But that's about the only thing here. Oh, that's not bad. No, that's good. That's good to hear. I always, always take that in consideration. Like, you know, elevation climate, do you really have to change the way that you use your pit or not? It's good to hear that you didn't have to do that, but you have some uh, very efficient pits. In in your mitts, I meant to make that rhyme. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, dude, I'm I'm loving that uh that uh Gorilla Kong uh, Kamado right now, man. That's my that's my go to right there, man. And um, from a standpoint of uh, of fire management, dude, I I just love that thing, man. I mean, this go low and slow, and you know you can you can do anything on it, man, and it gives you some really moist food too, man. I've I've had other Kamados before, but they weren't they weren't as heavy duty as that. Ah, uh, yeah. And um and that thing really just kind of seals some moisture in, man. I used to I, I was before I was thinking about you know well let me try a water pan. I was like no I don't need one on there, man. It just <laughs> holds that moisture in. So yeah, those gaskets, all that ceramic, yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, it look, it's built like a tank. It's so shiny. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, man, I want one. Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, it's it's a it's a heavy it's a heavy duty cooker, man. I mean, I really I really enjoy it, man. Um, and you know, getting back to where you know you can take that deflector out, and you know, the other day I made some chicken thighs, man, and you know, you took the deflector out, man, and just had that you know that fat dripping down. You get that good fat smoke, man. Get mm -hmm. a little more flavor in there and stuff like that, man. I mean, this some this some good stuff, man. So, man, really loving it. It's good to hear. It's good to hear, man. How do you, T, change your behavior with uh, cooking and frequency when the seasons change? I think it's about the same. It might be a little more frequent as far as, um, I guess maybe I get out a little earlier or maybe a little later. The only thing, well, I can't say too much later because it gets, sorry, it's going to be starting getting dark soon. Right. Like around five, six o'clock. But, you know, before that time hits, man, um, it's better out there when it's cooler and, you know, no, you have to worry about no bees, flies and stuff like that. But I, <laughs> flies I stay for the sure. course all year. Yeah. I stay the course all year, man. Yeah. That's good, man. Um, I mean, it doesn't change too much in South Carolina, maybe in like late December, those weird it depends, man, because I remember one year, October 1st, that temperature dropped like 40 degrees. You remember the day? Out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, because it was so weird. It was like, as soon as we hit October, it was just like cold jackets and stuff. And like, it seems like every so often it's like real cold or like ice storms. Because I remember one year, um, it was nice all week. And then like the weekend of state homecoming, it was freezing. It was oh, like man. 40s, ice. Yeah, it kind of shut the whole thing down. But all the whole week, it was like in the 70s, like high 60s. And this is from out of nowhere, boom. Mm. 
That's Everybody the crazy thing about South Carolina. It's like when it gets cold. Like, cause I another time I remember um, the temperature dropped like thirty degrees in one day. It was like yeah. a lot of people out and stuff. And then as the sun started going down, the temperatures dropped drastically. There was wind and everything, and it just everybody just went inside. Like really outside day. was dead. I remember. Um, yeah, somebody had a they party. Had shorts on. <laughs> and the part, yeah, it was people had shorts on. The party was dead because it got uncontrollably cold out of nowhere. You know when that happens, man. Everybody pack it up and go inside. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I don't care what your plans were. It's like I didn't plan for it to be this cold. So I'm going home. <laughs> Uh, Netflix and chill or something. It's too cold. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. In Texas, let me let me find out. Texas. <clears throat> I want to know more about Texas with because y'all it feels like y'all have like the the most extreme weather of of any state now. For for the past <laughs> like, I don't know, decade. What is going on in Texas? <laughs> man, I I <laughs> I can't tell you. I don't know, you know, who upset the gods, but I wish they would move. <laughs> Do y'all because, need a new yeah, governor man. or something? Oh, dude. <laughs> we, we've been getting all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, you go from the extreme heats to, you know, we've had like the summer, uh, you know, follow that up with some winters that, you know, you know I remember a couple of years back we had that, that came through here and snow and, you know, we don't get a lot of snow, but then when it, you know, we had had it that year, it was ridiculously high, you yeah. know, and, and with the, you know, the real job that I have, you know, supporting the grid and all that, it was like, man, <laughs> I can't get to work. Oh, that's okay. We'll send the Rangers to come get you. <laughs> and so they came out to the house, picked me up and took me to work and I was, stayed at work for three days, you know, because it, it, it was ridiculously cold and had you know, snow and everything frozen and it was just ridiculous, man. So yeah, we've had, we've gone through some serious extremes, you know, but as far as, uh, you know, with mm. me cooking, I'm a still cook. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, I've had videos where I'm out there, you know, and it's snowing and sleeting and I'm still out there with a brisket on or, you know, whatever I'm doing, you know, so we, uh, I'm like, like Jeff, man, we cook year round over here, man. We keep it rolling. Yeah, yeah. I think I guess that's the uh, general what about consistency. For you, Charlie, man, you know, I, I, I hate the heat. I actually want it to get as cold as it can get. The only drawback to it, you use a lot of fuel to to, to keep the yeah. pit going. That's the only thing. I'm like, why can't we have both? Damn it. <laughs> um, but I think like the fall is my favorite time of year because you get that, you know, the smell of leaves in the air. Um, makes you want to go outside more. Like, you know, T was saying, there's no flies and bees for the most part out there. So you, you get to chill. You got to worry about maybe some leaves falling on the pit while you're cooking. You know, you don't want f leaves falling on your food, so don't cook under a tree. You know, don't do not do that. But, it, you know, it, I just get outside more. Um, Halloween comes around, you know. It just feels... It just feels like festive. I need to burn something <laughs> when yeah. it's fall. Especially with football, for whatever man. reason. Yeah. Yes. Tailgating going on and stuff. Yeah. 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 A absolutely. Totally conditioned. <laughs> totally conditioned. Because yep. I remember when I first started grilling uh, outside with my pops, um, it was definitely football season. That's when we started to go out and actually do it. We didn't. It was hot in South Carolina. Man, we didn't go out during. The, I mean, we went out there, but man, nah. Cookouts, maybe, you know, um, family reunion. But when football season started, that's when we kicked it up. So I'm still in that mindset. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm out there as much as I can, man. I'll sleep out there if I could. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, I have a problem about that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's like almost perfect, consistent weather. You know, other seasons are like so volatile. But, yeah. Yeah, man. So, since we're talking about uh, adjusting our behaviors and, uh, and whatnot, more or less, when the seasons change, let's talk about our latest cooks. Uh, I feel like we got a lot to cover with Jeff since it's been so long. <laughs> so I don't know if you have a ninja scroll of all the cooks that you have, if you wanted to summarize them or not, but <laughs> give us a couple. Tell us what you've been up to. In, 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 the, in, the, in the cooking sphere over in your area? Man, just been 
pretty much breaking in that Kong, going back and forth between that and the uh, uh, and the Silverback, and uh, still got that little Acorn Junior that I use um, when I'm not really trying to get you know get one of the big grills out. But now I've been loving that Kong, man. Uh, getting you know doing some rib ribs and corn. Uh, did a video with some uh, with some thick cut uh, pork chops mm. uh, here recently. Um, but just breaking that thing in, man, um, I love it because it's just a, you know, that cooker is really versatile in what you can do with it, man, between baking or pizzas, you know, you can do just about anything on that. So really digging in on that unit and still going back to the silverback and, you know, getting in some, um, <clears throat> you know, kind of expel- exploring with some different, uh, some different pellets out there. Mm, okay. uh, seeing the flavor profile, if you can change anything with that. Um, but I just love, man, I love that silver bag. That thing is a real, that, that thing is a real cooker right there, you know, and I wasn't big on pellet grills, man, but that thing, that thing gets the job done and it's consistent, you know, it's insulated well. And I mean, that thing, it, it, it in terms of automation, I see why people, I, I see why that grill sells the way it does, man. You know, it's one of those things where you can just kind of set it and forget it. Um, if you want to, if you want to sear something, you got enough heat where you can get up to 500 degrees and you can, you can get a good sear on there. I still take my grill grates and put it on there as well, man, and get some nice marks on that. I take that and go back and forth between the Kong. So I'm, I'm loving both of them, man. Oh man. That sounds good. Um, what is the variety of food that you cooked over the past like month? Has it been tri-tip? Has it been truck? How, how much, how much variation you got? Oh man, I, I, I've done tri-tip, uh, done some ribeyes, um, uh, one night, man. Cause I was just tired of not cooking. Cause I just been so dang on busy with work, man. I just, <laughs> I just threw a pork shoulder on overnight, didn't record it or anything and had some pulled pork, Ooh. you know, for, you know, for a few days and did some things with that. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, I mean, between that and, you know, the hot and fast stuff, um, uh, doing some smash burgers on the griddle when I get a chance, it's funny because for a while there, I was using the griddle more so than anything, just because of how fast I could get a cook going, just because I wanted to cook on something. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I just didn't, I just didn't have the time, you know, from that side of it. Yeah, that sounds good, man. Yeah, you know, we we don't see my, many uh, reels or videos from you, but we're hoping to see more uh, from you, Jeff. You know, you, oh, you yeah. put out some dope stuff, oh, yeah. man. Yeah, we got some I'm like, you know, I got to get my camera game up, you know. I try, you know, Jeff should just be having the footage, just be zooming in and letting the light and be backing out. I'm like, man, <laughs> hey, we missed your stuff, man. Come on now. <laughs> you know what? Uh, hey, you know what, man? In terms of that, though, I, I've really, I've really regressed in a lot of, uh, in a lot of uh, the camera shots and stuff, man. No, I, not, not, not shots, but in terms of equipment, dude, I've just been using my phone now for a good minute. Yeah. And, just just sticking with that um it's crazy now because i remember you know back when you know back when i was you know, you know when i got my canon camera and and my uh my my dgi pocket too and i was you know i was like you know get, getting all this equipment and dude i, I just run a four iphone 14 uh pro max now and i'm i'm loving the things i get with that and also in terms of the reels and things of that nature you know it, it, there's a there's a lot going on with apps that can help that can help on your game with that too, man. Yeah, and that's that's what I really enjoy right now is you know, and the other thing too, man, is just the time the time standpoint. You know, by the time I'm done with the cook now and I'm filming it, I'm usually done or about ninety five percent done with the editing portion of it. So hey, you can't beat that. That's efficiency right there. Yeah, <laughs> you just got to stitch them together. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's nice right there. So, T, what have you been up to? Man, I'm trying to think since the last time we talked. Um, well, the most recent thing I did, I did um, some uh, turkey. I did oh, some did. smoked turkey, some uh, turkey wings and legs. Oh, and um, I just wanted to get a little smoke on them. So I, after that, I just took them off, put them in the pan with some onions and some water and some more seasoning. I wrapped them up. 
I don't think I got footage of me wrapping them though. And I put them in the oven because I did a macaroni next. So I just swapped mm. stuff out, did a macaroni. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, I think I might have did like some wings here or there. Oh, yeah. Um, on the uh, Acorn Jr. Yeah. Did some party mm. wings. We got some from Walmart. Um, you found right. some? <laughs> yeah. They were all right. We usually get ours from um, Aldi. The ones from Aldi are really good, man. I don't know what this vegetable um, thing they do when they vegetable or whatever when they freeze it, but it really makes them really juicy and whatever seasoning you use, it really brings out the flavor. Most of them at Walmart were cool, but I don't know. I'm going to be going back to Aldi for our party wings, man. So I wanted to ask you about uh, turkey legs and wings. I, I'm having a hard time finding them in, in, in my area. Did you just run up on them or are they prevalent where you're at? They're always there. Um, you know, of course, once we get deeper in the fall and stuff, it's going to be kind of hard. But I do know a place where I can find them. But we just we got them from Walmart. Um, they were right there. We picked them up. Um, yeah. They, I don't think we – probably because they've gone up, too. It's probably why – they're yeah, always there yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, you know when stuff up, get right? high, it's easier to find. Yeah, <laughs> You're like we'll pass that up. <laughs> man, I love me some turkey wings, man. Like you brought up a good point, you, uh, where you said you wrapped them. You got to wrap. I mean, oh, yeah, <clears throat> the, yeah, yeah. Tenderize that thing, man. It ain't nothing better than some turkey wings, some smoked turkey wings, man. Sometimes you season it like you know a hot wing. Oh, get the party going, man. Oh, man. So how many things are you doing on the Acorn Junior? You having fun with that thing? Oh, yeah, man. Um, I did a chuck roast like three times. I think I only filmed it once. I didn't like how it <laughs> turned out, so I never I never posted it. Um, did some wings, did some pizza, did a tri-tip. Um, I want to try like some riblets on there just to, just to see how it turned out. Um, did I do, might have did some lamb on there, I'm not sure. Ooh. What uh, part of the lamb? And I did wanted, uh, lamb chops? I want to do, no, shoulder. Shoulder, okay. I want to do, um, I want to do a beer can chicken on there. I think I got enough height clearance. I want to see how that turns out. But um, yeah, yeah, I really you know, love, I love how it comes ooh. up the temperature. Um, really quick. Yeah, I love how it shuts down really quick. Um, I've only had one, I guess you could say, incident because um, I've had it. There was. Is this another like story? Hot... Is this story worthy? No, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> this is this is this is regular stuff. There was okay. like a hot spot, like the size of the wing, because one wing this was burnt, and I was like. Okay, where did this hot spot come from? And wing. all these other wings around it were just fine. So I don't know. It might have been mm. an air pocket or something. Um, I was using lump, so maybe it had like a little tunnel effect and kind of, but it was, yeah, other than that, yeah, it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a beast of a cooker, man. That, See, that, that thing, I mean, it's, yeah. that, that's, that's my little go-to during the week, man. And it's so, it's so efficient with charcoal too. Oh, I mean, yeah. you don't need, it's already small. You don't need a bunch of charcoal anyway, man, but. And I'm glad I got it. Cause um, I don't know if you remember, I had like a little, little small grill that when we moved, I just threw it away. Cause I didn't feel like dealing with it. And then I always <laughs> regretted that when I wanted to do something small, I was like I should have never threw that grill away. Well, now yeah. I'm glad I threw it away because I would have never gotten this acorn <laughs> green. So it all worked out. <laughs> if it wasn't for you being <laughs> right. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. Well, hey, that's the come up right there, man. I tell you. That's right. Yeah. That's good. Now, Alton <laughs> has been posting a lot. <laughs> what? I'm waiting on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I don't know what you're talking Hold about. On. We need we need a whole segment. Bless us with the <laughs> with the great details of your cooks, man. Come on now, come on, give give us some. I mean, you know, we we've done a few things. Um, we're just trying to trying to concentrate a little bit on the short form stuff. You know, I've been for the longest time, and I haven't done you know a lot of shorts. I haven't done TikTok. You know, um, so 
am trying to build up a little bit on the IG. Uh, so starting to do some reels. So, you know, I, I just figured, you know what, it's time for me to start doing some, some more of this, you know, short uh, content. So that's what we've been working on here uh, recently. Uh, I do have some more long form stuff that's going to be coming up. In fact, I got a brisket cook that I'm going to be probably filming tomorrow on uh, the Weber kettle. All right. Um, I don't know if you saw the IG reel that I put out today um, where I'm, I'm using the spider venom. I don't know if you guys heard of the spider. Yeah, venom. I saw that. I was going to yeah. ask you about that. Yeah. Yeah. That, so uh, Jeremiah is a guy that owns that, uh, that uh, company, uh, spider grills. And I feel bad, man, because um, he sent me this thing a while back. I mean, it's been a while back, you know, and we, um, you know, kind of put it on the back burner, you know, is when we ended up going through cancer treatment and all that stuff. And, and I didn't get a chance to play around with it. And then we, um, you know, finished that and we started doing some cooks here and I hadn't got around to using it. And so finally I pulled it out this week and put it on my second kettle. And, um, I went ahead and, and uh, start playing around with it, man. And I'll tell you what, if you're looking for something to automate a Weber kettle, man, this thing works very well. Tell me more. So um, I'm using it with a, I also use, a, you know, a slow and sear. Uh, so, you know, you set it up the same way you, you normally do. Uh, but I put the slow and sear on the side where the spider venom attachment goes. And so basically, um, you know, the bottom, you close off your vents. And so all your airflow is coming from this, this control module. And so, um, you know, you put your, your, your slow and sear in there. I, you know, light one corner of the charcoal, put my wood chunks and stuff in there just the same way as I normally do. Hook it up to this, this uh, hook my temperature probe up to this uh, spider venom control unit. And I got the little battery pack. There's a magnetic battery that you charge that mounts underneath it that you plug into the unit. So it powers it because this thing does need power. Uh, so if you're not, you know, at the house where you can plug it into, you know, your your outlet outside or, you know, if you don't have a little, you know, power station to take with you somewhere, it's got this little battery unit, man, that hooks onto it. It works perfectly. And so, uh, yeah, man, you, you put this thing on there, put the probe inside your pit and... I fire up the app, you know, I use the app with it and set the temperature that I want it to be. And that thing, it senses and, you know, compares and blows air, compares and blows air, you know, so it works very well, works really well. So we're going to go ahead and get a brisket on uh, tomorrow and, uh, you know, do some long, uh, long content with that. So we got that coming up. We got another, I'm going to put together uh, another brisket, um, kind of a tutorial. And I'm, I think this time I'm going to take it from going to your various grocery stores or whatever, picking out the brisket. You know, how do you pick out a good brisket, you know, type oh, thing man. and move into trimming the brisket and rubbing the brisket and then into the cook. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to go into the slicing, but I might I might do the whole slicing, you know, give as, us as everything. part of it as Just well. Just give so. us everything, man. Yeah, yeah. So and I, I, and I haven't figured out if I'm going to make this. I haven't figured out if I'm gonna make this just one long video. Not, I don't mean to say long video because I don't. I, I despise having these long, twenty minute, thirty minute videos. But what I might do is is either I'm gonna shorten it in such a way that it works well, and I can put it into a longer video, meaning thirteen minutes, fourteen minutes, or I might break it up and just do one section for one video, you know, and make five videos. I'm not sure yet, so we'll see how it works out with that. Okay. Um, Man. but yeah, we've been doing, um, you know, like I said, trying to ramp up some shorts and TikTok and, and IG reels. Uh, let's see, we did the, oh, I'm sorry. The last long form I did, I did do the pork chops. I did some pork chop, uh, tomahawks and those mm -hmm. were, uh, really, really good. So if you haven't tried a pork, uh, tomahawk, man, you really got to try one of those. Yeah, they are good. Um, but yeah, we, we, we did, uh, let's see, uh, we did the brats. You know, game time uh, brats that worked out really well. Uh, that was a really good one. Uh, one that I just got edited up today, uh, I butterflied some uh, chicken legs, drumsticks, and made an Alabama white sauce for it, kind of a spicy Alabama white sauce. Uh, so Ooh. that one will probably come out soon. I did some uh, barbecue shotgun shells. Uh, you Ooh. know, everybody been doing that, and I hadn't done it yet. So I'm like, oh, let me do this. So we uh, we did that, um, and I have that ready to roll. 
Um, what else do we do? You told you had a lot. You see that? You see yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We did. So we did the. I think I released it yesterday. Was the um, Snake River Farms Tri Tip Taco? Uh, that one was really good too. Well, that was a very juicy taco. Uh, so we just did a, a tri tip, and we made a fire roasted salsa uh, to go with it. And um, man, that that taco was banging. So, it so yeah. Like it. Yeah, it was a yeah. that was a banging taco, man. That was pretty dang good. So, um, but yeah, we got some we got some some things up our sleeve here. We're probably going to be doing a uh, peach cobbler on the grill too. Oh, uh, nice. So I'll That's I'll go ahead and probably language. roll that one yeah, out. Yeah. Really quick and easy cobbler. one too. I'm definitely going to watch that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Been, Whenever I'm we have a you know, our get togethers, I was supposed <laughs> to do one. I forgot, man. Yeah. It's oh, good I stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have, I tell we you have what, I'm, get I'm, togethers and I'll throw that out there and man, they love it. People eat it up, man. You know what? I'm not gonna let another uh time lapse go by where I let all y'all do tri tip and I can't find a tri tip. I'm gonna cook me a <laughs> tri tip before we record next time. I'm tired of y'all talking about these tri tips, man. <laughs> it's been hard for you to find one too, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I've been yeah, wanting I've been one looking. for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been sitting around here. I want it so bad. I, you know, I only had it a couple of times, and I was like, oh, man, I got to get some more, man. Y'all keep talking yeah, about it. Joe, Joe makes some. Everybody makes some. I was like, Charlie can't get none. Yeah, Jeff, all the time. Hey, well, Charlie, I'll, I'll tell you this, man. When you find one and you uh, go and cook it, when you get ready to slice it, just pay attention to the grain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it does I, run. The problem is directions. me finding it. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen people grab those things and just slice it the same way from one end to the other. I'm like, no. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, about half of it is going to be okay. <laughs> the, the other, <laughs> hey, I did that once, <laughs> and what's crazy is I cut it down the middle, and I was talking, wasn't paying attention, and before I knew it, I went straight across. I was like, what? How? <laughs> now you mad? Like, how does yeah. it get all tough all of a I, sudden? <laughs> I cut it in half to cut it because that's where it changed that in half. And I cut it in half first, did the first half, I'm running my mouth talking. Next thing you know, I'm at the end of the cutting board. I was like, wait a minute. Ah. <laughs> yeah, man. yeah that's, that's crucial right there, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so it's funny that um, everybody's going towards short form video. Because my silly self is going towards long form video, like an hour long, you know, why not? Um, been trying some new stuff with some lighting. You know, uh, my wife has been uh, dabbling with the uh, with the lighting and the camera work. So we, we've been doing a, a couple of long form videos, doing a rib cook, uh, uh, what I do, uh, ch- uh, chicken thighs. So here and there. So trying to balance between short form video and long uh, I don't really care about how long it is. You know, at this point right now, I'm not trying to go with the algorithm. I'm just trying to put out stuff that I, I really enjoy doing. And if people watch it, bless you. <laughs> Keep watching. But, <laughs> but you know, it, it's just having fun right now. So we're, we're doing that and going back to uh, short form video, of course. So so here, here's one thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about, because Alton, you brought up a good point when you were talking about um, kind of you know, trying to find that that, you know, that length point where you want for your uh, for your future videos. Um, so we got a few things that's going on in social media and we're content creators. So I guess we could talk about this. Jeff and I would talk about this in the pre-show. So we we gravitate towards, I guess, uh, the short form video because. That seems like that is maybe the trend and the algorithm pushes it more towards that way. And it's more convenient. People start to maybe consume video in more short form format versus long. Um, and there's there's certain shifts. So I wanted, I wanted to ask you guys, um, first question, go around the table. First question is, when you consume video, not not publish it, but when you consume video, what is your favorite format of video? Is it short? Is it short form video, or is it long? And how long is too long? Pause. <laughs> <laughs> is that for me first, or? Yeah, anybody can go. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, lately I've been watching a lot of shorts. 
Um, looking at it from a, a pure viewership standpoint, we have ADHD. You know, <laughs> you a lot of people don't want to. <laughs> they don't want to sit there and pay attention to a long form video. You know, uh, and I mean, if you know, again, we're all content creators. You can go look at the analytics, and it'll support what I'm saying. When you start mm-hmm. to look at the duration through your video and how much of that percentage of the video is being watched, you know, and, and people are not really wanting to sit there and watch a long form video. Most of the time, you know, if you cut into the chase, people want to see, especially if you're doing an educational video of how to, you know, cook, whatever it is, they're wanting to consume that, the, the, the actual information. Mm-hmm. And then once they get that actual information, they're gone. Right. You know? Yeah. And so when you're watching a short, you know, you think about this for a second. You're sitting there watching a short that could be 60 seconds long and somebody is cooking, you know, say a tri-tip. And they're, you know, got the tri-tip. They're showing you if they do any trimming to it. They show you how they season it. They show you what cooker they're using. They show you how they cook it. They show you how they sear it. They show you rest it. They cut it and they taste it and they're gone. And you got all that information in 60 seconds, right? Versus somebody that makes a eight minute or 10 minute video doing the same thing, Mm -hmm. you know? So when you're looking at it from the viewership standpoint, you want to, you know, get that information to you as quick as possible and try to retain the people watching. And so that's why I kind of like the short form content, because again, you can crank out a bunch of different videos. You can probably crank out a few videos in a day. Yeah. You know, just cooking stuff that's a a fast cook, you know, type thing. And then, you know, it just, you're probably limited by, you know, your editing skills. You know, I think Jeff says he uses an app on his phone. I haven't gotten quite comfortable being able to edit on the phone. I have been, like Jeff said, using my phone a little bit more, but I still put it on my, my uh, PC and I still run it through my editor and I do things in my editor or whatever. And I do it that way. I mean, to each his own, whatever, whatever works for you. But for consuming the videos, man, I've been watching a lot of shorts uh, recently and I'm, I'm kind of enjoying watching shorts because I can get through more content in a faster amount of time. That's a good, uh, that's a yeah, good I, I totally agree with you on that, Alton. I, I, I think that's, that's the thing. That's kind of what Charlie and I were talking about in the sense of where, if I'm looking for something on maybe a research side of something, I tend to go YouTube. Um, but when it comes to when it comes to this man, you know, I, I enjoy the short content, the short uh, form content. And what you find more is that you can also, you know, you can reach more folks that way. And at the same time, you know, it, a lot of people are doing the same thing I do. They'll watch a video, or watch watch a cook, or whatever the case may be, on short form. Then okay, go right on down to the description, get a screenshot. You've got your recipe right there. You can go ahead and replicate it if you want to, or whatever the case may be. Um, and then also the fact that you can take this now and you can take it. You can hit an IG and a TikTok and jump on the Facebook Reels, and then also take it and put it on YouTube Shorts as well. Where with that long format, you were just pretty much just kind of you know sticking to the YouTube side or you know trying to make it a reel on Instagram or something of that nature, but. No, I totally agree with you on that yeah. one. But I will say, you know, when you're talking about that long form content, there's there is no magic number for how long the video should be. And so I subscribe yeah. to a notion of you make your video as long as you need to tell the story you need to tell. Don't make it yeah. any longer. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I know for me, I tune out, you know, a lot of times when people are dragging. stuff, I don't need to see. 45 seconds of you seasoning some meat or cutting. I mean, you kind of move through so that you can capture the attention, you know, to where people will pay attention and watch what you're actually doing. But I just think a lot of content creators, sometimes they just, they spend a little too much time on certain aspects of different things that you don't need that long a time to show or tell that little piece of the story that you're, you're trying to put, put across. And all, and all, one thing on that too, and I think that kind of is in terms of one of the things I had to kind of go through when I was still heavy into the long format side on YouTube was that again, what you just talked about in terms of what people need to see, you know, I'd go back where I'd say, okay, well, I checked this at, you know, I checked this at a half hour and I came back and I checked that another half hour. 
no, nah, ribs gonna take four hours to cook, you know, from that standpoint. So from that side of it, you know, I may just say, okay, we cook for two hours, now it's time to wrap, and then go from there to okay, you know, we're checking it, then we go ahead and we sauce or whatever we're gonna do, or whatever the case is, instead of that going back and forth. I know exactly what you're talking about when you say that. Yeah, you know, the best example that was given to me to where it made sense was if you look at, cause, cause everybody knows different aspects of, of different cooks, regardless of whether mm-hmm. you're a cook in the kitchen or outside or whatever. Right. So the way that it was explained to me was if I, you know, uh, am showing a fork and I'm panning across and you see the first, you know, tine of a fork, do you need to see the rest of them to know that it's a fork? You see that one piece, you, you, you know, it's a it fork. In. Yeah. So now you can cut to the next thing. And then you can see somebody eating with a fork or whatever. And so you know what they did. And so when you kind of look at it in that aspect, it's like, okay, that does kind of make sense. So if I start cutting, you know, a piece of meat, do I need to show them as I'm cutting off, you know, five, six, seven slices of brisket (laughs) versus, you know what, you see the knife, I cut a piece and then I'm holding the piece up showing, you know, I don't need to take your time watching me cut all these different slices of brisket or, or what have you, you get to the actual points that you really need to put across. And then the rest of it is inferred by the way that you edit the video. All right. How do you feel about that T? Um, kind of the same. Um, I've been watching a little bit of both uh, shorts and some kind of long form videos. Um, Cause I'm actually looking for something. So I'm looking at some different long form videos to kind of get an idea of um, how I'm going to do this thing. Cause I want to do some duck, but I don't want to <laughs> do it just regular. So I'm looking at all these different ways to do duck. And so when it comes to something like that, when I'm looking for something specific, then long form. But if I'm just looking at content or something that I'm kind of familiar with, I can do short form all day. Or if I just, want to see some content of some food short form because it's it's easy and it's quick um like i to say you can just go right through go right through you can consume a lot at one time but when you have these long form videos it's like and then for me sometimes something gets me distracted and then i might look at another video and forget that i never actually finished the one that i started so that's also the downfall of that too, because I look at YouTube on my phone. I I don't think I've ever really looked at YouTube like on the TV, unless I'm watching mm. like a show yeah. or something like that, or you know a live stream. For the most part, I'm looking at it on my phone. You know that's a good point, because um, you just you just made me realize how I consume uh, YouTube most of the time. I put it on the TV. You know, I put it in the most of the time it's background. Um, and it goes between short, long. I just, you know, sometimes when I'm eating and I just want to, you know, not watch the news, that'd be great. <laughs> and yeah. just put it on YouTube. <laughs> I'm looking for maybe somebody, to, you know, to brighten up and be like, hey, just, just distract me from whatever's happening over there. Long form is probably going to be what I'm going for because I'm just mindlessly, passively looking at it. But to the to the point, if I'm looking for information, I don't want to stay uh, in a scene for... A long period of time now if you're entertaining me that's different if i'm trying to learn i need to move because i'm trying to get some information right um get that information get out so yeah you know um there's something for everybody but now there's this thing that ig is testing out that i wanted to ask you guys about they're chasing after tiktok in a way they're trying to put 10 minute reels and make that a, a standard thing how do you feel about that Anybody can go. I don't think that's a good idea because if you want to do that, why'd you take away Instagram TV? Should have left that. <laughs> don't get me started. Exactly. Please don't get me started. <laughs> why? Why did you take that away? Now you gonna go back and do? Come on, man. <laughs> I understand it from a business standpoint. Yeah, exactly. You that's know, it. From their business standpoint, <laughs> but from yeah. our standpoint, is like you said. Why did you do this? <laughs> Yeah, they just I, I think that's yeah. them realizing they messed up. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. But it, so, things now are so quick is like when they had our Instagram T well, IGTV, people were actually there was less things to distract them. 
You, there mm-hmm. wasn't TikTok. Um, you know, there weren't any reels. Instagram was mostly about pictures still. Facebook, okay. I mean, there wasn't any reels on Facebook. There wasn't all this other stuff. But now you have all these other possible distractions. And so now you're going to try to get people to sit and watch 10 minute videos when they can <laughs> on just. On their phone. Right. Like, I mean, it was hard for them to get people like Instagram when they first started videos, it was 15 seconds and then it moved to 30 and then it moved to 60. It was hard to get people to watch, you know, from 15 seconds to 30 seconds of a video. But they somehow pulled it off. But that's like seconds compared to actual like minutes. And they're going to be some people who are going to do like 10 minute reels. And it has to be very (laughs) engaging for somebody to stay there the whole time. I mean, yeah. You're yeah. in between you you're cracking. I I can't really see anybody doing that with food unless they're like on a show and they're cracking jokes, having other content while the stuff is going on. Um for anybody else with like sports and stuff like that, I can see that. But with food, you have to be entertaining. You have to be for somebody to sit there for ten minutes and not see a, a notification for somebody else <laughs> posting something and then My go mama to that. calling me. <laughs> yeah or even in instagram itself somebody like your comment oh let me go back i need to comment on that what well, wait what was i watching yeah <laughs> you're gonna have to be really good yeah yeah, you yeah. Know, but you, you yeah. like you said yeah. you're gonna have to find that that balance between making an educational video and an entertainment video yeah yeah i i think it's yeah. easier to walk both lines for youtube because they have i mean as long as you can do, <laughs> as long as you you can have space on your computer to upload to YouTube, and as short as you can do, right? Yeah. But and and you can watch YouTube on many many different devices. But IG, I don't know about ten minutes of holding on to the phone, man. I don't know about that. And then the other thing about <laughs> um, YouTube is that you could swipe out of YouTube and the video is still playing, and you can do other stuff. Exactly. With Instagram, exactly. you have to stay there. With Facebook, you have to stay there because if you mm-hmm. close the app out, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tell you what, man, I really I like Instagram and at the same time, I don't like them. And I think this is this is part of the reason why in terms of, you know, you talked about the IG uh, TV um, T and, and going back to, you know, we're, we're trying to run back to that format and we're I think I feel like Instagram really is just trying to grab so much. You know, we're, we want to be the the place for everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, you've really got a winning format in the real side of this thing. That's you, you know we you know them and TikTok really kind of changed everybody over. I think I think IG pushes the more high quality you know short form yeah. than TikTok or YouTube. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like Instagram always has this thing, and I think we've talked about this before, Charlie, where You've got you yeah you've got an app but you've got really almost six seven eight different form pieces of content you can make yeah. and I think that from a from a content creator side I mean and I can do it now I can sit up here and I know I know the folks that will go back and I I, I put out posts for certain people because the people that look at my posts may not watch my reels right you know the same people that watch my reels won't watch may not watch my stories mm-hmm. you know and those type things you know and i feel like you're going after you're 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 just kind of you're making it not hard on the creators but at the same time I mean, you're just no, yeah they are yeah they are they're making it hard on that kind of yeah. gets frustrating they're making it hard on yeah. you know and i don't and think it's, it's fair you know they 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 change course as well T and I were talking about something with that YouTube has been neandering around for a, a long time now. They want to get into podcasting now and they don't make it easy or make sense for you to import your shows into podcasts to YouTube. They say they're going to do RSS and I, I, I don't, I don't want to get too technical. This, is, this ain't the platform for tech, but it's an easy way to import your stuff and it should be seamless. They're neandering around and they're making it hard for content creators because you got to you just got to do extra stuff to make it work. And to T's point, um, back in the day, they took away IGTV. They took away podcasting features from from uh, from Facebook. It's always at the detriment of the content creators, making us jump a little bit harder. You know what I mean? 
uh, more ways for us to upload and, and, and to get to the people, but they don't make it easy for us to actually do all that stuff. We have to find like tools that they took away from us. Um, they, they had tools back in the day that made it easy for us to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, it, it just annoys me a little bit. <laughs> you know, one thing I will say about, you know, what I do like about the 60 second format is that as a content creator, it challenges you to get your content yeah. in that 60 seconds and get your, your message across mm-hmm. and do it in an engaging way. So That's for true. that, I kind of like it because like I said, I, I, man, I, I, you know, for whatever reason, stayed away from, you know, reels and TikTok and all that stuff for a long time. And now I'm finding that I actually do kind of like it because, you know, when you're like Jeff, you're busy with the schedule, whatever, do you can crank out a reel or crank out a, you know, TikTok or whatever, you know, relatively quickly. You know, and then there's the times when you can still do a 15 second or whatever it is just to have fun with it. Yeah, you know, get some yeah, audio that's exactly. funny or whatever and show something, you know, I can just show opening the grill, showing the meat, you know, and it could be a 15 second little, you know, reel or whatever. And I'm gone, you know, and, and it keeps you relevant to people, you know, your viewers or whoever that's watching you. And, uh, I, you know, I kind of like that, that aspect of it. Yeah. Exactly, man. And that's and that's that's one of the key parts is you, you really learn how to break down the reel into what, what you want it to be or what you need it to be. You know, sometimes you don't have to go a full minute. You know, sometimes you can take it you can you can get everything done and, you know, get a get a quick blurb out, you know, 15 seconds on, hey, this is what I'm doing on this grill or, hey, you just got some smoke rolling or, you know, going into 60 seconds. And then the other side of it too, it was an interesting thing you put to the group chat the other week. Cause that was the same, it was a question I had on certain things was, okay, hey, do I need to narrate this or no? You know, and looking mm-hmm. at that in terms of, hey, you can, you know, in terms of your cook and what you're putting out there. Um, one of the things that I found is I, and I do some, you know, some paid content for some local folks around here was some of them prefer the, you know, the narration and the, and the words popping up and all that. And some of them didn't, you know, it's more preference on what they want for, you know, for this event that's going on or, or whatever they have going on for, you know, for, for the event that I was covering. So you're right, man, it, it teaches you how to edit and it also teaches you how to cut that thing down. Cause when you, it's funny, you, some, when I first got into the real side, I found it was actually a little bit harder to get the reels done than it was <laughs> the, the video because you, you're dealing with that time that time piece. You could you could say, "Hey, well, I'll, I'll have this long format at seven minutes," but then when you're sitting there, you're trying to figure, out, "Okay, what do I need to cut out of this reel to get down <laughs> right. to where I can have a reel where I'm at sixty seconds you and know? make it make sense?" Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. But you know what? So how has that changed now teaching, for you? How has I'll I'll get to you out in a minute. How has that yeah, changed yeah. for you now? Now you set up the shot um, for intentionally for the reel now instead of trying to take the long and shorten it down. Is that right, or or do you still try to take the longer and shorten it down? I I pretty much just I'll pretty much just run. I, I'll pick my shots out. I may have a little bit of extra in there, you know, but I pretty much say, okay, this is what I'm going, and I I kind of run from the, from the aspect of hey is this going to be you know am i going for 15 seconds 30 45 or am i going for the full minute right and that's kind of the way i look at it when i'm when i get my shots going from there and you know it it seems to work out a little bit better for me on on this aspect of it now um and if and also depending upon what i'm doing if i'm trying to feature if if it's more if the if the reel is more so about like the grill that I'm using, or if it's more so about the actual cook and the food that I'm making, or if I, if it's the, uh, you know, like, like Allegro marinade, if it's, if it's something I'm doing for them or whatever the case may be. And I got a, you know, I got a three second blurred shot coming in on the front side of that, you know, and then going back mm-hmm. and make sure I get the bottle at the end of the reel, you know, that type of stuff. So. Yeah. Huh. Good. Didn't mean to cut you off Alter. Go ahead, man. Oh no, man. You're all good. Uh, no, one of the other points that I wanted to make was, you know, also when, you know, we're doing this short, you know, format or whatever, it also teaches you how to do B-roll because most of your, your reels mm-hmm. in, in TikTok or whatever is B-roll, you know? And so, you know, Jeff, thank you for bringing that up because yeah, I posed the question to the group with one of mine. I was like, Hey, so what do you guys think, you know, narrated or not? 
and and the reason why I, I brought that up was because I'd been watching a lot of different uh, short forms and you know, people that are not narrating and they're putting together good B-roll content. And it, it made me think of, are you guys familiar with Peter McKinnon? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Peter McKinnon's fantastic photographer. I mean, videographer, we know the, the work that he's done. Um, it, it reminds me of, he had put out a challenge to, you know, all of his viewers or whatever to put together uh, a short form video of making coffee. And it was literally all B roll. You know, there's no narrating in it whatsoever. It's all B roll. You know, and of course, the, the the people that are doing this are like way more advanced than you know we are, or whatever, with this stuff. But uh, it was it was so fantastic to watch all of the different interpretations of how people were doing, you know, the, putting together the B roll of how they make. Call. And so it told a story with no words. It's all B roll, and it's all cut in such a way that it kept you engaged and it 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 um, educated you on how they were making the coffee. Well, I try to look at that same thing when we're doing what we do. You know, we're making food. We're making, you know, try to chicken, whatever it might be. How do we get this across so that I'm engaging you to watch me for 60 seconds and I'm getting this story across and teaching you what it is that I'm trying to do? You know, and so that was where my question of that came about. And and I think if you guys remember, I actually did two forms. Yeah. of that video where I did one where it was narrating and I did one where it was no words and it was just all B-roll, you know, and, and I happen to like the B-roll one better, but you know, it is what it is. I'm glad you did both. I, I like both. Yeah, I, me I too. like yeah. listening to, watching both. Yeah. Yeah. Think, I've had a lot of people, it's, it's, it's weird to me, but you know, through all the long videos I've done over the couple of years or whatever, people have, have <laughs> left me so many comments like, oh, dude, we love your voice. You should just sit there and read, you know, children's stories and my kids will, you know, and I'm like, what? That's, that's not? just weird. So <laughs> when I, I started doing some of the content with no words in it and it was just, you know, B-roll or whatever, I had people actually send me messages through Facebook or email me and, hey, dude, are you not talking in your videos anymore? <laughs> and I'm oh, like, wow. really? <laughs> you can't change up on a man. <laughs> It's just kind of funny to me, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, that's a good compliment, though. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. see it, but yeah, but man. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad somebody likes but it. You know. <laughs> but T, you helped me out that day in getting, you know, in terms of getting the actual, you know, the actual words up on the screen on on IG in oh, that yeah. reel, and it was one of those things, you know, where it's like. Again, that's another segment of folks who, you know, and, and I didn't realize until I started getting some comments and some feedback that people were like, well, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't have my phone up, but I mean, it helps me to have that up there where I can just kind of go through that silently or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, you know, but I, I agree. I mean, it, 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 it's so many different ways you can tackle the reels in the short format now, man, where it's like, you know, it's, it's really taking on a life of its own. I might have to yeah. hit y'all up about that one because I haven't done that yet. Yeah, I'm about yeah, because some people, when that. you think about it, some people are looking at their phones and stuff. Are they at work? So they really can't have the volume up. Um, a lot of people look at videos with no sound, and they're actually right. reading like the captions. Um, you also have right. people who, um, you know, hearing impaired, but they're on Instagram True. checking it out. So captions work for them. Hmm. That's a good point. I am curious. I want to ask y'all a question is when y'all are consuming, you know, short form watching stuff, what do y'all typically watch? I mean, are y'all still just strictly cooking or, you know, what do you, you find yourself watching to entertain yourself? Maybe cooking in news clips, stuff like that. I watch a little bit of everything because I actually have uh, three Instagram accounts. And so I jumped okay. back and forth. <laughs> we ain't even going to get into that. I'm going to leave it alone. Man. So. Secret. Yeah. Agent Where you coming from? Because <laughs> no, I had, when Instagram first started, like I had a private account. And um, that's when Instagram was really cool because it was just a bunch of photography. Yeah. And um, Long so when I decided to do my poetry Instagram, I was like, I don't want to make this, you know, so I did that. And then when I started with the barbecue one, I was like, I don't want to mesh the two. Like you have a poem here, and then all of a sudden here comes a cook. 
So that's how I ended up getting three. So I'm looking at food stuff. I'm looking at a lot of sports stuff, especially like basketball. Um, a lot of old school, like highlight reels and stuff. I saw one of like um, Penny Hardaway the other day. They oh, had man. one of, um, what's the dude name? Um, Steve Francis, of all people. I forgot Steve all about Francis. him. Steve Francis. I ain't heard that name yeah. in a long time. It was a highlight reel of him, a bunch of different clips and stuff. Steve so I'm watching like Charles. food, man. sports, um, some poetry stuff, uh, videography and photography, because I really like videography and photography. So there's some photographers and videographers I, I follow that share a lot of dope content and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm watching a little bit of everything when it comes to Instagram and Facebook. Man, you keep your battery charged, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of consumption. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I tell you what, I, I watch, uh, kind of like T, I watch a little bit of everything, but, I you know, it goes to the barbecue and cooking. But at the same time, man, I've really gotten into some stuff to where it's like, it, and it doesn't have to be a real certain topic. I'll follow content creators just to look and pick up some of their editing tips yeah. and their skills. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, dude, I'm sitting up here. <laughs> it's going to sound crazy. It's, it's one, it's, it's one uh, content creator named Farmer Grace. <laughs> it's about farming. She's a 20, 23 year old farmer. But like some of these shots, like I mean, she's doing pan shots with a drone while she's driving a tractor and all this. And it's like you pick up so much stuff between that. You know, I'll, I'll give it. Look, I'll tell you this too, man. A lot of a lot of fashion stuff too. Mm-hmm. You can pick up oh, shots, yeah. editing, all these different type things, man. To where edit to where it's like I'm really not watching one particular thing. I'll follow content creators based on you know the way they put their content together. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I've, uh, it was, was great is, you know, we have a, a, a really good group of guys that do really good content and I've, I pick up some tips from you guys just, just watching, you know, with lighting and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, yeah, all it's good, man. Yeah. I watch a little bit of everything. I try to stay away from the news. <clears throat> CNN is, uh, will corrupt your life. You know, <laughs> back to barbecue, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Great topic. So uh, let's interact with the fe- the people. Um, leave us a email at uh, blacksmokebarbecue uh, at gmail.com or leave us a, uh, a voice message on um, Spotify and tell us how you feel about short form versus long form. What do you like to consume? If you're a content curator, what do you like to uh, publish? Hey, great convo, guys. So before yeah. we go, Want to give a quick shout out. Want to give a quick shout out to uh, Dominique Leach because uh, she is the uh, she is the master of Q twenty twenty three. Congratulations, barbecue brawl champion! Yes, yes, yes. Did work. Did work. Great season. Congratulations. Hope everything um, works out well for you in your next chapter on your new journey in life. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. So. You guys, tell everyone where they can find you on the socials before we head out of here. I'm going to start with the dog father himself. Yes, sir. The dog father's barbecue, man. T-H-E-D-A-W-G-F-A-T-H-A-S-B-B-Q. I'm on TikTok. I'm on uh, YouTube. I'm on Instagram. Um, The dog father's barbecue at Gmail as well. uh, If you want to reach out to me. Right. T, where can they holler at you at? Uh, T dub, T U, T dash D U B B dot B B Q on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. All right. And Jeff, where can they find you? You can find me at Outdoors with Jeff. That's G E O F F on YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok oh. and Instagram. Don't forget the IG. Don't forget the IG, man. Nice to have hey, you I forgot one man. thing too, though. Threads. What's that? Threads. threads. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Threads. We keep neglecting threads. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, threads. We're all on threads, right? 
All on threads. Yeah, I am. Um, I oh, yeah. forget about that because I'm always <laughs> over there with my poetry stuff. Yeah, I'm on there all yeah. day, pretty much. Yeah, but... you are. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that phone charged. I mean, what <laughs> I'm a thread about barbecue? Unless I just, you know, a bunch of videos. Hey, I could ask right. questions. I guess. Hey, what are y'all cooking today? Or yeah, about to hit up with Chief Phillips for some questions. Yeah. Let him tell me a story on, on threads. I'll let you boy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, threads. I hey, if you can find us on IG, we're on threads. So click through Absolutely. and uh look at the profile and uh you can you can talk to us that way as well. Yeah, I'm C H A R L I V E M A V E R I C. That is Charlie Maverick everywhere on the socials on YouTube is Maverick Barbecue. This is great talk to you guys once again man we we have to definitely do this again sooner than later to give you guys out there in the in the world some great content yes so um winter's here football season's here got a message for you guys um yeah you know you may be good at fantasy football you may be not i don't know i'm bad at it Mm. i learned my lesson (laughs) hey you know what Maybe you shouldn't be gambling on games so much. You know, just chill out a little bit. If, you, if you're not good at it, stop pushing it. Stop pushing it. Here's a better bet. Go out and get a grill. Learn how to do fire management. It's a more guaranteed type thing. You know, be better at yourself. Don't have your wife kick you out. Until next time, we'll keep your marriage safe. You know, cook with us. <laughs> and keep that smoke rolling. Until next time, y'all be blessed out there. We out! Peace. <laughs>